How's it going, guys? I'm Mike Dwyer from the Bunker Recordings and BetterMixes.com, and today we're going to take a look at Pro-Q3 from FabFilter. Now, I usually only like to make review videos on plugins that are really unique or innovative and do things that none of your other plugins probably do. So I really wasn't sure if I wanted to make this video or not, because ultimately, at the end of the day, Pro-Q3 is just an EQ. And you definitely already have at least one EQ, probably a ton of them. But if you've been watching my videos for a while, you know I'm a huge fan of this plugin. I use it on pretty much everything. And I've had a few people ask me recently why I like it so much. So I figured I'd put together this video just to show you some of the cool, unique features in it that most other EQ plugins don't have. So the first thing I really appreciate about Pro-Q3 is how many EQ bands it has. So with a typical EQ plugin, let's take a look at, oh, I don't know. Let's do this McDSP one. So this goes for pretty much any of your kind of analog styled EQ plugins. So like your SSL or your Neve or API plugins. This is a great sounding EQ, as are the ones I just mentioned. Ultimately, we've got a high and a low band, which are both shelves, and a couple of bells in the middle, and a high pass and low pass filter. Now for a lot of stuff, that's plenty. If you've got pretty decent recordings, four bands plus the filters is all you really need. But that's not always the case. Sometimes you're going to have to really mangle a track and, you know, you might end up with an EQ that, oh, I don't know, maybe looks something like, like that. Again, obviously not always, but when you need it, it's nice to have those extra bands. I think Pro-Q3 gives you like 24 bands or something, which is just a boatload. I don't know that I've ever needed that many, but sometimes it's nice to have five, six, seven without having to put on a second instance of your other favorite EQ. The next really great thing about this is just how flexible each one of the bands is. You know, going back to that McDSP one we're looking at, this particular EQ just has gain and frequency, so you don't even have a Q control. And then the high and low bands are both shelves, so once again, not a whole lot of control over that. And you know, it's a very similar thing with something like an API EQ or a Neve EQ. And again, a lot of the time that's fine. If that's the sound you're going for, then perfect. Those will get the job done. But in Pro-Q3, I just really love having the flexibility to do anything from super wide and gentle to super, super precise and surgical, all in the same EQ. So, you know, if you have a couple of weird, funny resonances in the mid-range or whatever, and then you also want to add a nice, gentle, high shelf, you can do both your surgical and your tone shaping in the same window, and you don't have to use two separate EQs for it. And just a couple more things on the flexibility of this EQ. You have all these different slopes you can choose from to get some different sounds. And I absolutely love the filters on this. So the high pass filters can go from nice and gentle to ridiculously steep. And my favorite part is they can be resonant high pass and low pass filters to easily boost just above the cutoff frequency, which can be a great way to add a lot of low end to something without it getting muddy or boomy. But moving on from the pure flexibility of this, one of my absolute favorite features in Pro-Q3 is the auto gain. So you can turn that on or off with this little button down here. But what this does is it automatically adjusts the output level of the plugin to compensate for any EQ moves you're doing. So for instance, if you have a big giant boost here, it's going to turn the output down a bit so that your overall level stays about the same and you're less likely to get tricked by volume differences. I made a whole video on the importance of level matching your plugins, but basically, a lot of the time our minds are tricked into thinking whatever's louder is better. So in this case, if we've got a big massive boost going on and we compare the before and after, without this auto gain, the after is going to be louder and therefore we might think it's better even if it's not. But with the auto gain on, that won't be such an issue. Now it doesn't do a perfect job, especially when using high pass and low pass filters, but it still works really well and is definitely a handy feature. So let's just check that out in action. I've got this EQ on my drums and let's just do a couple of pretty radical EQ moves so we can test out the auto gain. All right, so I just boosted a boatload of mid-range into these drums. And as we do before and after here, you'll notice that it stays about the same volume. And if we turn the auto gain off, and 
And the same goes for if we did a massive cut here. Pro-Q3 is going to boost the output to make up for that. So this is a fantastic feature in my opinion. Because it compensates your output in real time as you're tweaking parameters, I think it really allows you to EQ smarter and prevents you from getting tricked by level differences, allowing you to make moves that actually improve the sound of your source. So moving on to the next thing that I really love about this plugin, it's the dynamics feature. So this was new in Pro-Q3 as opposed to Pro-Q2. Pro-Q3 is now a dynamic EQ. So for instance, listening to the drums here, let's say this was just a drum loop and you didn't have all the individual tracks here, and maybe you wanna bring out the low end of the snare drum. So let's just try that with a normal EQ. So that's beefing up the snare drum, but it's also adding that 200 hertz to everything else in the drums. So if we drop our gain back down to zero, and then grab this red ring around the gain knob and bring that up, now we have a dynamic EQ band. So it's only going to make this boost when there's a lot of information going on there, which should be when our snare drum is hitting. So now we've managed to boost the low end of our snare only when the snare is hitting, so it's not affecting the rest of our drums that much. Now, this isn't the most flexible dynamic EQ in the world. You don't have any control over attack and release times, but I found that probably like 90% of the time, this one just works, and it's so fast and easy, and I love that it's built into my go-to EQ. Because again, if I'm EQing, and in this case, if I'm trying to bring out that low end of the snare, and I'm doing it with a normal boost, and I'm going, oh, well, that doesn't quite work. I'd like to try a dynamic EQ. I don't have to bring up another plugin and bounce back and forth between my main EQ and my dynamic EQ. I can just take care of all of it in one window. I mean, let's say we're EQing, we got some low end boosted, maybe we're cutting a little bit there, whatever, and we boost some top end. And let's say this is sounding really good on our drums, but then maybe the chorus kicks in and the drummer moves to a crash, and all of a sudden it's getting pretty bright up here. Having the dynamics built right into this makes it really, really easy to just grab this band, turn the dynamics on, and now, as the top end of the source starts getting brighter, the dynamics will kick in and it won't be boosting as much. And by the way, if you do find yourself needing a more tweakable dynamic EQ, I definitely recommend checking out Tokyo Dawn Labs Nova. It's completely free and completely badass. They do have a paid version that has a few upgrades, but even the free one is really, really good. So for the next really cool feature in Pro-Q3, let's take a look at our bass and our drums together. So it's sounding pretty good, but let's say we want to clean the low end up a little bit. A lot of people have a tough time balancing the low end of the kick and bass drum. So this next feature of Pro-Q3 will definitely help with that. So down here, if we go to the analyzer menu, here we have a list of all of the instances of Pro-Q3 being used on this track. So in this case, let's go find our kick in, and there it is. We'll click that. And now when we hit play, down here in the analyzer, we're going to see both the bass and the kick drum. So this gray one here is our bass, and then the red is our kick drum. Now obviously you should always be using your ears, but that doesn't mean we can't use our eyes to help. And this can make it really easy to see if your kick and bass are really taking up the same space or not. I'm going to hit play again, and take notice of the vertical red sections that show up. So wherever those red areas show up, those are areas where there is a lot of overlap between the two tracks, and therefore might be areas that you want to address. Again, obviously use your ears, but this can often help you find the trouble spots faster. So I'm going to hit play again, and then right where that red area is, I'm going to put a dip in our bass guitar. So the kick and the bass might be fighting each other a little bit less now, but the bass is also sounding a little bit thin when I start cutting down there. But once again, Pro-Q3 has an answer for this. Over on my kick tracks, I have them all sending to this kick sidechain bus, and then on Pro-Q3 on our bass, I'm gonna set the key input to our kick sidechain bus. 
So now if I take this band and put it back to zero and turn on the dynamics instead, if you click this auto button right above the dynamics bar and then click this little fella here, that turns on the external sidechain for the dynamics of this band. So now this dynamic EQ move is gonna be looking at our kick drum and it's gonna duck down this low end where the bass and the kick were fighting only when the kick hits. So this just made it super, super easy to keep our kick and our bass from fighting without losing too much low end from our bass. So the next feature that's really, really cool in Pro-Q3 is that each band can be assigned to stereo, just the left, just the right, the mid, or the side information. And again, that's on a band by band basis. So for instance, on a stereo track, if there's something funny going on on the left side, maybe there's a weird resonance or whatever, but only on the left for some reason, you could do a dip like that and then just set it to left and totally leave your right side alone. Alternatively, I think I've mentioned this in a past video at one point, but if you've got a track that you want to make extra, extra wide, you could do something like this. So do a couple of boosts at different frequencies, set one to left, one to right, and then make corresponding cuts on the opposite side. So this one will set to right, and then this one will set to left, and doing something like that makes the left and the right side more different from each other, which will help to widen out your sound. Another really useful case for this is here I've set up something very similar to our kick and bass example we just looked at, but now I have this EQ on our guitars and the side chain is our vocal. So at the moment, whenever the vocal's in, this is gonna add a small little dip into the mid range of our guitars to make some extra room for the vocal. But we can take it one step farther and set this just to the mid channel because ultimately our lead vocal is right up the center. So we really only need that hole for it in the center. So let's check that out. I am falling through the floor tonight. Got a one way to get out of sight. And when the rapture comes my way. So hopefully you can hear with this bypass, the vocal is just struggling a little bit to cut through. But once we turn this on, it's really sitting into things much better. But again, because we're only doing it to the mid channel of the guitars, it's kind of minimally affecting them. And since it's dynamic, when the vocal isn't singing, it's gonna completely leave our guitars alone. And while we're looking at guitars, let's take a look at another one of my favorite features. So let's take another listen to these guitars. I just turned off some of my previous processing that I did. So now there's a couple of annoying resonances going on. Let's take a listen for that. So yeah, I'm hearing like one or two annoying kind of whistly frequencies in the upper mid range. And Pro-Q3 has a feature called Spectrum Grab that can be really useful for this. So I'm gonna hit play, then I'm gonna click and hold inside the analyzer down here. So once it turns blue here, you're now in spectrum grab mode. So now you can just grab any of these peaks sticking up here and pull them down and Pro-Q3 will make a nice narrow cut right at that frequency. It also labels a couple frequencies that it thinks might be weird, resonant, annoying frequencies. But in this case, I'm pretty sure this guy right here is our problem. So let's hit play again and I'll bring this down. Then once you're done, you can just click anywhere outside of this and it'll bring you back to your normal window. And we'll get rid of that one because that was just an example. That one wasn't a problem at all. And now we can tweak these to get them just right. So that sounded pretty good. And it was super fast and easy to find those using the spectrum grab feature. 
So again, this is another case where you need to remember to use your ears. Don't just pull down everything that's sticking up, but it can be useful to help find those annoying resonances. Just make sure to double check them after to make sure that you got the ones that you were looking for and that cutting them out is actually improving the sound and not taking the life out of it. And the last really cool feature I wanna talk about is the EQ match. Now, this isn't necessarily something I use a whole lot, but every once in a while, it really comes in handy. This isn't something I needed to do in this session, but there have been a couple times where the vocals were recorded at different times. For instance, maybe, for instance, maybe the band was recording it at home and they did the first round of vocals and most of it was good, but then they end up wanting to redo a chorus or something, or they change the lyrics somewhere. So they go back and record the vocals for that one section again. But when you get the track to mix, the new vocals and the old vocals do not sound the same. Maybe they used a different microphone or they recorded it in a different room. Or maybe the singer's voice just sounded different that day. It had a different character to it or whatever. You can actually use the EQ match in Pro-Q3 to match them together so they sound at least a lot more similar. In this case, I'm going to use a pair of guitars as an example because, again, I didn't have that problem in this song that we're looking at. And it would probably take me a while to dig through my files to find something where that happened. But in this case, in our chorus, our two guitar parts were tracked through totally different rigs Guitar left was a Les Paul through a Mesa Boogie amp, and our right guitar was a Telecaster through an Orange amp. Now in this particular case, I actually like the difference between them, but let's just say that we didn't and we wanted them to be closer together. So let's say we really like guitar left, but we're not digging the right guitar as much. So I have an instance of Pro-Q3 on each one of them, and we're looking at the one on the right guitar. Now we're gonna go down here to the analyzer menu again, and we're gonna choose guitar left, then we're going to hit EQ match. And once again, click external guitar left. And now we're just going to let it play for a minute. Okay, so once we hit match, Pro-Q3 is going to create an EQ curve for us that will bring those two guitars closer to the same sound. And it will automatically set how many bands it thinks you probably need here, but then you can adjust it anywhere from nothing to 24 bands. I found that most of the time you'll want it pretty close to the default that it chooses, but sometimes you might have to bring it up or down a little bit. But once you get up to like 24 here, in most cases you're doing some pretty weird EQs that isn't necessarily the best thing. So let's bring this up, um, I don't know, let's do eight. That looks pretty good. So let's just listen to our right guitar and see what difference that made. And both together. So yeah, it darkened it, boosted some low end, and made a few mid-range tweaks. Ultimately, you'd want to go through and make sure that all these bands are actually helping you. Some of these really narrow boosts might not be working so well. But in this case, you can definitely hear that it made them much more similar. So maybe you really like that, but maybe you think it's a little bit too much. Maybe you want to kind of split the difference. And Pro-Q3 has a cool feature for that. I know I said the Match EQ thing was the last one I was going to talk about, but forgot about this. So it's got this gain scale slider here. And this isn't just good for when you're doing a match EQ. Maybe you EQ your snare and you like the proportions of all the moves you made. But after your ears rest for a second, maybe you think you just went too far with it. Well, using this, you can leave all the proportions exactly the same, but just reduce the amount. Or conversely, you can increase the amount. So the scale goes anywhere from zero all the way up to 200%. So in this case, like I said, maybe we want to kind of split the difference between our original guitar right tone and our EQ match one. So we'll bring it down to like 50%. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you want to check out Pro-Q3, I'm going to leave a link to FabFilter's website in the description down below. Also, be sure to head on over to bettermixes.com to grab a free copy of my Ultimate EQ Cheat Sheet.